Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we're going to continue the topic that we started yesterday. Yesterday we began our, 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 our discussion on the topic of data analysis, which, which is on page number 263. And day before yesterday we finished our very last problem on the geometry. 263, if you turn to page 263, you will see where it talks about data analysis. In the data analysis, in the concept of, in, in the realm of statistics, the most fundamental concept that you have to understand is what is known as the standard deviation. Yesterday we talk, talk, talked about the concept of central tendency, concept of central tendency, and we talked about the concept of dispersion. And today we're talking about one of the tools that is used to measure how dispersed, how widespread your observations are. And that, that tool that is used most often in the statistics is standard deviation. The standard deviation has to do with adding up the squares of the deviation from the mean. So first we have to figure out the average of all the observations. Once we have the average of all the observations, then we ask ourselves how, how is each of these average, how, how much does each of these average deviate from the mean? That's called deviation from the mean. And once you have the deviations from the mean, we square them. It has to do with the squares of the deviations. Now before we go into the, all the details and all the, all the nitty gritty, the very first question that comes to our mind is, why not just add the deviations? For example, let's, for example, let's, let's have three observations. Three, four, five. The mean of these three observations is going to be three. The mean is going to be 3. So this is your observation, usually represented with, le with letter X. And then this is the average. Average means, average is the mean. Mean here is the X with the sign on the line on top is a symbol for mean. The mean here is 3. So we measure the deviation from the mean. We can do mean minus the observation or observation minus the mean. is the same thing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we're going to square the quantity. So here it's going to be 3 minus 3, here it's going to be 4 minus 3, here it's going to be 5 minus 3, 5 minus 3. Notice that I, as I started out on the top, I put down the mean minus the observation, but quite inadvertently I ended up doing observation minus the mean, so I have to fix it. It is the observation minus the mean. Now once we have these quantities, we have to square them. So 3 minus 3 is 0, 0 squared is 0, 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 squared is 1, and 3 minus 2 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. And we add up. In this case, this is going to be 5. This 5 is what we talk about, the sum of the squares of deviation from the mean. Let's make a note here. This 5 here represents the sum of the squares of the deviations of the deviations from the mean. Notice it's the sum of the squares, not square of the sum. Let's understand this terminology. Sum of the squares and square of the sum. These are two different concepts, squares of the sum. For example, if I have two numbers, 1 and 2, 1 and 2, sum of the squares mean this. You square the first quantity and you square the second quantity. This represents the sum. You see it's the sum. It's the addition. It's the addition of what? It's the addition of the square of the two quantities. Sum of the squares. Which is what this is. This is the sum of the squares. 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared. Because 0 0, 1, and 2 here represent the deviation from the mean. These are the deviations from the mean. And it is the sum, this quantity here, is the sum of the squares of the deviation. These, these are the squares of the deviation. 0 squared is a, 1 squared, 2 squared. These are the squares of the deviation from the mean. And we take their sum of, sum of the squares, as opposed to square of the sum. Square of the sum would mean... Square of the sum would mean this. You take the sum, 1 plus 2, and you take their square, which is an entirely different concept. 
So here we're not doing 0 plus 1 plus 2, we're not squaring the 3, but rather we're, we're squaring each deviation separately by themselves and then we're taking the sum of the squares. Okay? Now here's the basic concept. Before we go to the nitty gritty, let's ask ourselves, let's ask ourselves, why not, why not just add the deviations? Why square them? Why square them? Why indeed? Do you know the answer? Why do we bother squaring them? Why not just add, the, add up the deviations from the mean? It would save time, wouldn't it? Because, because the observations below the mean will wipe out or cancel the observ observations above the mean giving us the illusion that there is very little or in the extreme case no deviation at all we're going to show it here forget about all of this thing pretend Instead of, instead, of, instead of adding up the instead of adding up the square uh, instead of adding up the squares of the deviation instead of adding up the squares of the deviation let's just simply add up the deviations themselves let's just add them add up the deviations themselves so here the deviation is zero here the deviation is one here is deviation is two well actually this was not a good example this does not actually wipe everything out because the mean happens to be oh the mean is four here this is all wrong the mean in this example is 4. What the hell? I just caught myself. The average of 3, 4 and 5 is 4. Makes me wonder what the hell is this guy going to teach me about the statistics if he doesn't even know how to figure out the average. The average of 3, 4 and 5 is 4 because 4 is in the middle. So watch what happens. So the deviation from mean in this case is negative 1. This is a deviation here is 0 and deviation here is positive 1. What happens if you add up, if you simply add up the, de the deviations, what do you get here? You get a big fat zero. And it gives us the illusion, listen carefully, if you simply were to add up the deviation from the mean, it gives us the illusion, this zero gives us the illusion that there is no spread at all. It shows you standard if the standard deviation is zero, a zero standard deviation means every single observation is the same, like we did yesterday. Yesterday, if you watched the yesterday's video, we had country A and country B. In country A, everybody had the same income. Whereas in country B, we had a wide disparity in income. So if you get a standard deviation of zero, that tells me that everybody in that country has the same amount of income. Which of course is not the case here. We can see here clearly that, that the first guy makes a $3,000, second guy makes $4,000, third guy makes $5,000 a month. And of course there's a spread here. But that thing does not do the job. Which is why we square the quantities. We square the quantities. Ignore the last work that I did. That, that, that obviously was incorrect work because I wasn't paying attention. So here we square the quantities. As you can see now they will not cancel each other out. A negative one squared and a positive one squared. The negative one and a positive one will not kill each other. We will preserve them. So that the observation that fall below the mean and the observation fall, fall, fall above the mean do not cancel each other out. It is for that reason that we square the quantities. The next question that comes to our mind is, next logical question that comes to our mind is, why not, why not simply take the absolute value? If that's what you were concerned about, if your concern was 
that this negative one will cancel out this positive one, there's a very simple solution. The very simple solution is instead of taking the squares of all the quantity, instead of bothering with taking instead of bothering with the square of all the quantities, why not simply take the absolute value? That would preserve the negative numbers not killing the positive numbers. You see? Wouldn't it? So then why do we take the squares of the quantity? There is a second reason for it. The first reason why we take the square is to preserve the fact, to preserve uh, the negatives and the positive going after each other's throat. The second reason is this. Let me, I need the room, so I have to raise something here. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Let's put a one, two, three, four. Let's pretend the mean is five. This is six, seven, and then finally a ten. Watch what happens. Why do we square? I, I'm going to read everything here. Why do we square the Why do we square the deviations instead of simply taking the absolute value? Let's pretend that mean is five here. If mean is five, the deviation from here to here is just one. Deviation from here to here is just one, and deviation from here to here is two. If, if the 7 is your observation, then deviation from the mean is 2. Now, if you, if you simply take the absolute value, okay, keep listening. If you simply take the absolute, absolute value, then it's 5, 6, 7, 8, if, and if 5 is the mean, if 5 is the mean, then x minus x, x bar would be 1, 2, and 3. And if, and even if you had something below it, even if you if some observations were below it, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, the deviation would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. We could simply take the absolute value. If you had 5 observations with the mean of 5, with the mean of 5, and if you wanted to make sure that these negative numbers do not kill positive numbers, giving us a big fat zero, making it look like there is no variation at all, where, where else there is clearly a variation here. I gave, us, I gave an exam to the class of five students. I gave an exam to a group of five students. I gave them a quiz, and these were their score. One, one student scored three points out of ten points, the other student scored four points, and five points, six points, seven points. Clearly, there is a disparity between the student, the student score. Every score. Every student did not score the same score, did not have the same score. But if I were simply add up the deviations, if I simply add up the normal deviation, just mean minus the observation, the negative 2 will kill positive 2, the negative 1 will kill positive 1, and the sum of the deviation would be a big fat 0, giving us the illusion that there is no disparity at all, there is no dispersion at all, where clearly there is. My question is, if that is the problem, then why not simply add up the absolute value? That will do the job, because now I get the absolute value of 6. Here's the answer. The reason we do not simply take the absolute value, and the reason why we are hell bent on taking the square of it, the reason we are hell bent on taking the square of the deviation is that if you take the simply if you simply take the absolute value, then the observation that is one unit apart, an observation that is one unit apart, one unit of it. The observation that is one unit away from mean gets a weight of 1 because 1 squared is 1. But, but the observation that is 2 units away from the mean will now get the weight of 4 units. First of all, notice the language. It just says 2 units away. It doesn't matter 2 units below the mean or 2 units above the mean. As long as it is 2 units away, now the deviation from the mean is 2 units. And I'm going to take that, for example, if the mean is 5, in our, in our previous example that we just finished, the mean was 5 and the observation happens to be 3, 3 minus 5 squared will equal 4. 
and therefore this now is given the importance of four units what we're saying here is this what we're saying here is that observation that is two units away from the mean is not twice as grave twice as serious as the observation that is one unit away from the mean but to us in the in the eyes of the statistician the farther away that you go from the mean the more grave more serious the situation is an observation that is 10 units away the mean is 5 and the observation that is, observation is 15 this this observation is given an importance of 100 units as opposed to an observation that is only one unit away which is given an importance of only one if you were to typically take the absolute value then this this grab this this situation would be considered as 10 times as important as this one here by taking the square we give more importance to the observation that the farther away in other words what the statistician is saying is that it is more serious to us we take it 10 observations listen very carefully listen very carefully 10 observations each of them being one unit away from the mean the statistician says is not as serious as one observation being 10 units away from the mean I'm going to say it one more time 10 observations each being one unit away from the mean so their deviation from the mean is going to be 1 their deviation going to be from the mean is going to be 1 and you're going to square 1 square 1 square 1 square and you're going to get 10 because you're going to have 10 1 squares because you have 10 observation each of them is one unit away in the eyes of the statistician 10 observations each of them being one unit away from the mean is not as serious as one observation being 10 units away from the mean because one observation that is 10 units being away from the mean the deviation is 10 so you square it and now we get a hundred not a ten the, to us this situation is 10 times as grave this situation is 10 times as serious as that situation which makes perfect sense which makes perfect sense if you use your common sense it makes a perfect sense because as a teacher let's pretend that you are a teacher let's pretend that you are a teacher and you gave the quiz the same quiz that I was talking about before and you had a whole bunch of students in the class and the spread was such that you had 10 students or however how big the class was 20 students 30 students doesn't matter if I had 10 students who scored 6 the, the, the average for the class is 5 keep listening the average for the class is 5 and I have 10 students each of them has scored six points but that's not a big deal that's not a matter of concern as a teacher I would not worry about it but if I had one student who scored a big fat zero even in this case the deviation is only going to be five it's not going to be ten but to me the deviation of five if he scored a zero if he scored a zero zero minus the mean if I square it to me that is twenty times twenty five times as more important in my mind as those 10 students who are only one away from the mean because this guy is big fat zero he needs a big help this is a very grave situation it is for that reason to give more importance to the fact that the distance that are away from us play a greater role it is for that reason that we square the deviations and not simply add up the absolute value do you understand enough said I think I probably spoke too much let's do an example shall we or should I say, save the example for tomorrow? I think the video is already too long. I'm going to save the example for tomorrow. We'll do an example of how to, how to measure standard deviation tomorrow. Okay? Which is going to be the example on page number 274. And we'll go through step by step. It's a five step process that you follow. And we're going to, as I said, we'll do it tomorrow with, with, a, with a proper example. Okay? I'll see you then. Bye now.